All right. So this chapter, chapter 907, this is the shit that makes One Piece just so amazing. Like, there are so many things to break down in this chapter. I mean, this this chapter alone just produces, like, I don't know, like, five days worth of just, like, you know, speculation videos and all that other kind of stuff. Like, okay. I don't even know, like, really what to begin with this chapter. It was just so hype. Easily 10 out of 10 chapter. Um, you know, like, this is either the best chapter of One Piece that's ever come out, or, I mean, the other top contender is the, uh, you know, Luffy being announced as the fifth, uh, the fifth emperor, but, man, yeah, okay, so I'm just gonna try to jump into it for this review, um, again, there's a lot to break down, um, okay, so, I guess I'll start with the cover page, cover page, uh, like I said in the live reaction, um, going over Orlumbus, uh, and he's crying, he's kind of saluting as he sails away with his, uh, um, the 56 ship, uh, fleet, and, um, I like that this, it continues to show that Orlumbus is a man of, like, a lot of great honor, um, you know, he, he feels a lot of, um, you know, not shame, but, like, I guess, gratitude, and also, like, um, you know, he just, feels very emotional having to leave his kingdom, but that just shows how much respect he has for Luffy, and, like, yeah, it's just going to be awesome uh, to see, like, you know, Orlumbus later on in the, uh, um, you know, in the story when it's, like, the big war. All that stuff, uh, probably going to be the last page for the uh, cover story um, or Orlumbus, but, okay, anyway, let's get into it. So, page one, chapter, chapter starts off with uh, Whole Cake Island, and... We see there's a uh, lightning, you know, like around um, Whole Cake Island, the uh, Whole Cake Chateau, whatever. And this is like just what we saw in Chapter 903. If you go back to 903, and you see when the uh, Big Mom is like freaking out about, um, you know, Luffy becoming another emperor and all that stuff, and saying like, "Oh, like he didn't defeat me," all that stuff. Um, there's lightning too. That's just like just centered on, um, you know, like Whole Cake Island. Like the all there's clouds it's like a you know really dark clouds all around and I think these are these are two separate like moments in time um because uh like 903 and 907 obviously there's like you know obviously like time gap but you know it could have when I was first reading it I was like okay like is this like just right after she read the uh you know the bounty and then you know she uh like, thought, like, okay, I'm just going to contact Kaido right away, but we see that the Marines, like, wiretapped her, so, um, yeah, I think this is, like, you know, probably, like, maybe, like, two days after she reads the, the bounty poster, but my point with the lightning is, did Big Mom make a new Zeus? I think she might have, because of, um, you know, just how, like, centralized the, the light, the lightning was, and, um, it kind of, it is core, like, coinciding with her rage, you know, like, whenever she's angry, we've only seen it twice, but for each time, it's, you know, there's been this lightning strike, and we know that Zeus is obviously with Nami, so, maybe she made another, like, a, a Zeus 2.0, you know, but, um, I thought that was really interesting, um, but then, yeah, we get to, obviously, the big part, where Big Mom is talking with Kaido, and over the Den Den Mushi, and talking about how, like, hey, like, Kaido, you owe me a, you owe me a, uh, a favor. Like, I'm going to be the one to kill Straw Hat. Kaido's like, no, I'm going to kill Straw Hat. Um, and so Big Mom mentions, like, this lifelong debt. And, man, I, okay, that, that part was, first the art. The art in that, that page alone. Just, like, the facial expression of, uh, um, of Kaido. When he says, like, if you come here, Lin Lin, I'm going to kill you. That was wild. That was so cool. Um, just like, you know, you see, like, the like the, the booze on his lips. You know, kind of like, I don't know. I'm, yeah, sorry I was staring at Kylo's lips, but it was cool. Pause. Um, then uh, Big Mom, you know, like, she's talking about how, like, you know, like, let's just get along, you know. Um, I, okay, so I guess, like, what I think about that is, 
Um, so it's obviously a debt that's owed to Big Mom. So Big Mom helped Kaido in some way. I was thinking that maybe because there was a theory that um, uh, Oven and then so, so, uh, that would mean that Katakuri and Daifuku are brothers. Since they're all brothers, they would be children. So that Oven was a is the son of Kaido because there's a lot of like facial similarities, all that stuff. Which I mean, we don't know who the uh, um, you know who Katakuri Oven Daifuku's like dad actually is. Um, so that is a possibility, but I'm not sure. Just based on you know, again, it's the um, you know, that's like a huge plot thing. Maybe it'll come up later. Maybe it'll come up in, in Wano if, if, if that actually is true. But the fact that it's like the lifelong debt for like Kaido owing Big Mom, um, that wouldn't really seem like something that obviously like that having those three powerful like kids benefits Big Mom. Maybe she gave, you know, they had, like, more kids, and she gave, like, you know, some of the kids to Kaido, but I'm not sure. Maybe it, what I'm thinking it has to do something with, like, with souls and stuff. Um, maybe helping Kaido, like, build his army in some sort of way. Um, it's, there's a lot, there's a lot to really break down. It's, and it's been really cool that Oda has been tying, you know, um, in this like Yonko saga thing that's been going on, it's been as far as like the Straw Hat side, it's been Kaido and Big Mom kind of like intertwined, you know, like without us really realizing it. With like Caesar, um, a little bit with Doflamingo, uh, the way that that's kind of going around, but mainly with Caesar um, and his like Devil Fruit, Devil Fruit Factory, and kind of playing both sides of like Big Mom and um, Kaido, but. Um, yeah, I think that, uh, you know, they also talk about, like, their past, and, um, there was just the, um, Ace story novel, story novel 2 that came out, and, uh, right now on Twitter, Sandman, um, is, he's a, an account that translates a lot of, like, One Piece news, he just did a, uh, he's doing a, like, chapter by chapter, um, you know, translation, and kind of, like, giving, like, a summary, and in it, one of the things that he, that is listed in the chapter is that um, on an, in a news report, the world government um, kind of declares that Shanks and Kaido are the, like, a new, like, the new generation of Yonko. Um, and Big Mom and Whitebeard are, like, the old generation, the old guard. Um, which is pretty interesting. So... Maybe since when Kaido was like on his way up, he like sought like there was some tie with Big Mom that like they allied a little bit or they clashed. There's there's obviously something there, you know, and uh um I think it has to do something with Big Mom her devil fruit, you know, like the soul. Um the fruit kind of uh giving power to Kaido Kaido's like army and stuff like that. Um I don't know. It's going to be very cool. A lot to speculate on that. Um, maybe going back and rereading some stuff, there's going to be, uh, you know, some more, um, you know, information in like Punk Hazard or, um, you know, Dress Rosa, that kind of stuff, more clues with uh, Caesar. But anyway, so we see that. That's pretty hype. Um, oh, and one more thing. Um, I'm not sure if. I don't think that Big Mom is going to go to Wano um, and try to kill the Straw Hats. I think that uh, maybe it's going to be she's going to send somebody. There's going to be like a small kind of infiltrated army uh, because I don't think that Big Mom wants to have a full-on battle. I think they're going to come with... I think Kaido and Big Mom are going to come to an agreement and Kaido is going to allow... Uh, Big Mom, there's going to be something where it'll force Big Mom to send, like, a small kind of a group, you know, and maybe Smoothie will be a part of that, you know, because she took, obviously, the, the least amount of damage, 
You know, she's the strongest of her, the sweet commanders left. So maybe that's when we'll get, a, like, some smoothie action. Um, I don't know. That'd be really cool. But, yeah, I just wanted to bring that part up. Um, Wano's going to be insane. I can't wait. I'm so hyped. Um, yeah, I'm just, that's going to be awesome. But we're in the Reverie arc, so let's keep talking about that. Um, so... Let's see what else. Okay, so then it goes to the Marine headquarters and um, Sakazuki and um, Kizaru. They're talking, and Kizaru is like, "All right, so you know they wiretapped um, Big Mom and Kaido, so they listened the, into the whole conversation. See a bunch of Marines like, you know, manning the the stations on the ships. Like, you know, this is like a a time of war almost. Like we're gonna have to." sail out, you know, stop this meeting. And Kizaru's like, hey, should I go out there and I should should I like put a stop to this? And Sakazuki Yakani knew is like, you know what? No. You know, we're gonna we don't know what Wano's military might is. Um I'm assuming that he knows that Kaido and the Shogun are working together. They're in control. And Wano is not affiliated with the world government. So that wouldn't cause like a whole nother um, level of, like, conflict, you know, and, uh, I don't think the Marines want that right now, especially with the reverie, obviously, going on right now, um, Garp, so the next page shows the red port, and Garp and a bunch of other vice admirals sitting around a table, all discussing, kind of eating, and it looks like that they're almost, like, on, like, guard standby, you know, so, like, if anything goes down, they immediately, will go up to Mary Joas and, you know, like, just be there to help, you know, protect. And they're like, yeah, kind of like the the bouncers, you know, at the club and stuff. Um, so, which is super hype because we know that Dragon is going to do something. That means Garp is probably going to, you know, show up. And I just love Garp. Garp is amazing. So, um yeah, Garp is laughing. He's at the red port, and he's uh, he's laughing about the fact that these two Yonko, Big Mom and Kaido, hate Luffy, going after Luffy, and they want to kill him. That and like he's just like yeah, like I mean that's hilarious. Like it's like he said before, it's like I, there's nothing else I can do to protect Luffy. Like he's he's his own man now, you know. He's he's a huge he's a big shot pirate. Um, so he's all calm about it. And this is where it's, like, really interesting. So, um, Hina starts talking, and she's like, okay, so Big Mom and Kaido teaming up. It reminds me of, like, the old days, you know, like, Garp, like, you were the hero of the Marines, right? And this is where, like, there's, like, a translation difference between Manga Stream and um, Jiminy's Box. So, in Jiminy's Box, it says something along the lines of, like, uh, you know, oh, you were the hero, like, you had the name Hero of the Marines, and blah, blah, blah. And in manga stream, it says, um, it alludes to that, the fact that due to um, Kaido and Big Mom, you received the name, the Hero of the Marines, which is kind of interesting. I'm waiting for the official Viz to come out, um, should be tomorrow. Um, but then it talks about the, um, an event that happened, um, a, almost like a group and it's locks or rocks. And that's to kind of depending on the translation. Um, even in manga stream, it's just locks. In Jiminy's box, they call it rocks. But um, they give a little editor's note saying it could be also translated as locks. So I'm leaning towards locks. But anyway, it's the way that this is, is talked about. Um, it sounds like a very st- like strong pirate crew or pirate organization that their captain is no longer around. Um, Because Hina talks, like, says, like, yeah, like, you know, they're a leader. They no longer have a captain. Blah, blah. And Garp is like, yeah, like, I'm surprised that you, you know, you know about that. Like, you remember that. You heard about that. Blah, blah. Like, yeah, like, you know, if they make their comeback, things are going to be really interesting. And there's nothing we can do to, like, stop it. You know, we just have to, like, let it play out. And, uh, you know, and Garp is smiling. You know, he's, like, all hyped about it. He's, like, eating his big meat and, like, uh, paws. And, uh, um, you know, everyone is, I was like, Garp, like, why are you, like, 
that's not something to smile about. And okay, so there's man, dude, like there's so much just in like that the chapter could have ended right there after page like seven or something and been a ten out of ten chapter. Just like talk like just so much history is already given out and so much speculation. It's so hype. So um okay. So locks, rocks, whatever you want to call it, that organization, somebody in that crew, I think is the lurking legend. I think that has to tie in with the lurking legend that the one of the editors, um, Otis editors, has alluded to. Um, I think it might have been Oda who actually said like a lurking legend is going to come back in Wano. I think that has to do with it. We don't have enough information yet in the story to really speculate on it. Um, everything talking about Garp as being the hero of the Marines has always been tied with Roger. Um, something also interesting in that little kind of like dialogue exchange is that um, Roger brings up the fact that Kaido and Big Mom used to um, they kind of like reign supreme before uh, Roger made his appearance like over like 40 years ago. Which um, goes back to, uh, it makes it weird that Kaido is part of the new generation. So maybe he was just a pirate, like a strong pirate for a long time. And then, you know, really like got a lot more, I I don't know. It's very, very weird to to call him a, in the the new generation. But I guess maybe since Big Mom and Whitebeard were so established, um, Shanks is, you know, like kind of newer and then Kaido you know, somewhat newer. It would be like Whitebeard, Big Mom, um, Kaido, then Shanks, like down below, as far as like the timeline of uh, getting power. But anyway, yeah, that was interesting. Um, so again, I don't think there's enough information yet to really speculate on who these people are. Um, this group, I think that it's a uh, um, cause again, everything that's been mentioned in, uh, the story when Garp is referred to as the hero of the Marines, it's been tied with Roger. So very interesting stuff. Um, okay. So then we get to, uh, um, top of Mary Joas, Pangea castle. Um, we see the empty throne and this is obvious game of Thrones reference. Like I said in my review, and I'm sure if you watch game of Thrones, um, you can easily spot this out. A bunch of swords making a throne. Um, very cool. The the kings, the original twenty kings, who um, formed the world government after the void century eight hundred years ago. Uh, they, uh, um, you know, they're represented in, with those the swords and all that stuff. And no man should sit on the on the um, on the crown on the uh, throne because. Uh, you know, there's all these different powers and everything, and, um, you know, everything ties in. The The five elders, the Goro say, are um, kind of like the the, str- the the strategic planners of the uh, celestial dragons there at the helm. All this stuff kind of tying together, um, and um, Steli has to make an oath um, that basically, you know, like he will kind of, play along with this, uh, the, the, Samar- the um, ceremonial kind of tradition of, you know, no king is better than the other. There's this kind of play of, not equality, because, like, the celestial dragons are still up there, but I think Steli is going to be an idiot and try to sit on the throne, um, thinking that, like, he will have all the power in the world, which just won't happen. Um, I think... Yeah, there's just so much that's going on right now, and it's insane. Like, I am so, I've never been so hyped just, like, waiting for One Piece chapters. I'm always excited for One Piece. Like, I've been excited for One Piece, like, every week for, like, you know, 10 years. But, dude, like, yeah, it's, uh, it's been crazy. It's, man, One One Piece is, is just on fire right now. So, that happens. Um, that's probably it's it's an amazing part of the chapter, but it's probably the slowest part of the chapter, um, which says how amazing this chapter is. So then we go back to the uh, 
we go outside, we're at the socializing plaza, and we see that um, Charlos is there, who, Charlos, dude, is such a, he's a fuckboy, all right, he's ugly as hell, he's got the snot ran down, he's like, just gross, you know, he, he can't even grow like a real beard, he's got that like, you know, cheap stubble, let me look at the, a picture of this, like, this, this, this loser, you know, let's, let's see, yep, he's got the gross stubble, the rosy cheeks, the gross sideburns, dude, what's up with his hair, too, like, God, he is so, just like, he's worthless, so, he wants to capture Shirohoshi, have a, uh, a mermaid, um, you know, he wanted Kami, um, back in, um, Sabahodi, couldn't get her, got punched by Luffy, um, he should have just, like, you know, fucking quit, dude. So, he's got one of his, his giants trying to capture her. Vivi's freaking out. Um, Rebecca's freaking out. Sai's trying to hold um, Rebecca back. And then, um, dude, Leo. Leo coming in like a boss. He does not care about anything. He doesn't care about the, um, you know, the hierarchy. He's he's a true baller, dude. He comes out. He's like, dude, you do not mess with my leader's friend. You know, like, there's no you don't you don't get to you don't get to mess with her. You know, like you're you're a gross, ugly boy. I'm gonna like I'm gonna beat you up, dude. So he's running after her. He's running. Um, Leo's running at Charlos. Um, Sai is, like, calling out to him, he's like, damn it, like, Sai is knowledgeable, he understands, like, the hierarchy of everything, um, and, uh, so, he's going, going after her, he's like, well, damn it, I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna, like, go in with Leo, we're gonna beat this guy up, you know, we're already pirates, who gives a shit, whatever, so then, um, we see Leo get stopped, Sai gets stopped, and it's by Rob Lucci, and Rob Lucci, lead, seemingly the leader of uh, um, Asia Zero, CP Zero, is with Stussy, Stussy, and um, Kaku, and then that one guy from uh, Film Gold um, that, you know, is, like, super tall, has, like, that weird, and, like, I think he had, like, a chain power or something. Or, no, that was the, uh, the vil- like, the villain in, like, uh, that one, like, episode. I forget what the episode is called, but, um, yeah, so, Lucci's all here, he's defending the Celestial Dragon, and he's talking about how, like, there's just, like, there's levels to this shit, man, like, Celestial Dragons are gods, kings, you, you kings and everything, you're kings, but, like, you, you can't compare to a god, you know, and so, like, Lucci's, like, mildly getting off to this kind of stuff, dude, like, he's, He's, like, has, like, this really, like, evil smirk and, like, um, you know, he's talking about, like, how, like, yeah, so it's only natural for a god like him to get everything he wants. And, uh, um, Vivi's, like, you know, you can't even reason with these people. Like, they're trash. Like, blah, blah. Like, and, um, Luch is, like, you know, it's, you can't even, like, read, like, you're not supposed to reason with a god. Like, they're gods. So, Luch is standing there all, like, stone-faced, you know, and, Dude, this is where I was, like, super hyped. So, Neptune comes in. He's like, you know what? Screw this. I love my wife. I love my family. I love my people. But I'm not going to let you... Like, I want to have fishmen be up on the surface. But you're not taking my daughter. You know? Like, I don't, I don't care. You know, what you do. Like... My my family is the most important thing, which is so badass, dude. And so when I'm reading this, you know, I got emotional. Like, it was pretty hype when like Neptune's talking about like, I'm sorry, Odahime, you know, but like I gotta protect our daughter. So Charlos is like, you know, take care of him, um, CP Zero, and Lucci is like, oh yeah, like I'm gonna don't you don't have to tell me twice. Like, Lucci loves. I don't know, dude. He just loves taking, like, those those orders like that just to, like, wreak havoc and, like, kind of beat up the weak. Um, so then, like, out of nowhere, we see that Charlos is whacked 
by this like this massive mace and we see that it is somebody wearing a uh you know um a celestial dragon like kind of that astronaut like like robe type thing so um and the celestial dragon saying that you know I've been waiting for years blah blah and we find out that it's Don Quixote um Mo- Mosgard Mo- yeah Mosgard who you know if you remember he's from Fishman Island he um wanted to go back down to Fishman Island to uh um get his runaway fishman slaves and uh his ship crashed um he's all bloodied Odihime heals him up then um, she and him go back to the surface, and after like a week of negotiations, Odihime comes back down with the um, the paperwork to get the uh, Fishman Island moved up to the surface. So during that time, which I'm sure we're gonna get a flashback, Odihime changed, um, you know, Don Quixote Mosgard from being a total Charlos wimp to just like straight faced badass just dope dude you know and the fact that like that was cool enough seeing like the change of that but then we see that he's don he's a don quixote so we already see that we saw in the uh otahime flashback we see this guy's father you know because like he's calling his dad daddy which is just like dude that's weak, you know, don't, don't say daddy, daddy is like, okay, that's a whole, ugh, man, okay, either way, so, and his dad is like, this kind of like, his face is like all fat, and groupy, and all that stuff, so like, we know, Do- we know Doflamingo's dad, um, looked nothing like that, um, I'm pretty sure Mosgard's hair is, it was like green or something, but, um, maybe they're, their cousins, or their, they're they're obviously in some way related to, like the Don Quixotes are all like related, um, so I'm actually really excited to like you know learn more about that. Not only the the week period where how Odahime was able to change him to change him from that like spineless loser to like someone like so badass like that who'll just take a mace up you know and like whack somebody else. It's pretty sweet. So he saves Shirohoshi. Neptune is going to be in his debt. That's just like everything is coming like everything full circle like around like that. That's dope. Then, okay. Then we get to the end of the chapter. So we see the five elders, the Gorosei, seeing the meeting and they're like, okay, what do you need to talk about? They're talking to a guy like in a, you know, in a cloak. I'm like, what's up, like, you know, we have, like, we have big stuff going on right now, we got the reverie, like, we don't really have time for you, you know, like, so, everyone, like, they command all their soldiers to leave, like, get out of here, guy sits down, and we see that Shanks, so Shanks is meeting with the Gorosei, and he's saying, I want to talk about a certain pirate, dude, like, how could this chapter, okay, this chapter is better than Dude, ah, this chapter is better than Luffy becoming a Yonko and getting that that bounty. Not by much, but it is. It's just like there's so much going on. Like, oh my god. Okay, so. ah, Alright. So first off, the Gorosei and Shanks. The only time that the Gorosei has talked about Shanks other than this, is when Shanks and Whitebeard were playing to meet. Um, and I think, I forget what one of the Gorosei said it, but they they brought up something about how um, Shanks doesn't want to, uh, he's not a man about conquest, you know? Um, which, at the time, I just read that as, um, you know, like, just based on his actions and, like, his... his his movements and all that stuff, like, it doesn't look like Shanks is someone who is, like, aiming for the One Piece. Um, obviously, now there's a lot more to that. Um, there's obviously, like, a history between, between like, all these guys. Man, my voice is just cracking. So, that's just how hype it is. The co- the hockey from this chapter is like, just causing my voice to, like, shake and crack. 
So, um, Shanks is staying there, and, okay, so Shanks is, like, Shanks is such an interesting character, dude, because, like, he's just been all around, like, all over the place, and he's, like, such a, he's, I highly doubt Shanks is, um, affiliated any, in any way with the Celestial Dragons. I don't see that at all, um... I think that when Shanks got the power of Yonko, um, when he got so much land and stuff like that, I think that he set up a meeting. Um, he tr- he tried to reach out with the uh, with the uh, the Gorose beforehand, and um, I think that he has some. He had he obviously has like some prior, you know, like relationship or connection with the Gorose. Um, and I think that is just talking, straight up talking about, um, you know, like certain, like stuff of the world. Um, which leads me to think that the certain pirate that he wants to talk about is not Blackbeard. Because Shanks has been, Blackbeard has been on Shanks' mind for a long time. Um, I think that we saw Shanks when, uh, in the very beginning of the story, Shanks had his scars, I'm pretty sure, when he was with Luffy. Um, so, obviously, Shanks got his scars from Blackbeard, um, and it's, Blackbeard has always kind of been on the radar for Shanks. So, I think that the first time that Shanks and, um, the Gorose have, um, have talked or met, that had to do with Blackbeard. Um, so I don't see why he would say a certain pirate because, you know, like they would probably already know like, okay, like Blackbeard. So I think it's either discussing Luffy, um, about, you know, his strength, uh, you know, him now being referred to as an emperor or, um, possibly a lurking legend type thing. You know, if like a a power that is going to be coming, a force rather that will be coming toward to Wano. You know, and uh, this is like, yeah, um, this is just insane. And the fact that like Shanks just rolls up like this, um, I don't know if Shanks is gonna. I I don't know. Hopefully, next chapter is just, is completely dedicated to Shanks. Meeting with the Gorose. That would be insane. That would be all. I'd love reading every page of it. Um, I love reading every page of One Piece as, as is. But I would freak out. You know, I'd probably be just like eyes locked on the chapter. And like, yeah, I, next chapter is going to be crazy. Um, it w- What would be insane is that they're talking. And then the end of the chapter, it kind of cuts to... Um, the, uh, what's it called? All the kings and everything sitting down for the reverie, you know, and then kind of Shanks is still talking with the Gorose. I don't know if the Gorose actually need to be at the reverie if they're leading the, the, the discussion of the reverie. Let me read this. So it's like, say, what do you, came all the way here. We're currently in the middle of the reverie. A man with a position like yours isn't suitable enough for the politics of the world. Um... Yeah, so, oh, man, I don't know if they're going to be a part of the reverie because it would be cool if, in the middle of the reverie, um, you know, Shanks and the Gorse are still talking, and then the re- like, so Shanks and Gorse are over here talking. Reverie's going on. The Revolutionary Army attack the reverie. They make their declaration. Blah blah. Shanks then is like, okay, what that? What the hell is going on? Like, you know, everyone. Uh, all the Gorose, they're like, we feel disturbance in, like, the hockey. You know, that kind of shit. Um, and, like, you know, Shanks does something there. But that's just, like, dude, this arc could go on for just forever, man. Like, I'm just, oh, man, this is so good. This arc is amazing. This arc, so far, is just, is fantastic. Um... I don't do ratings of chapters because 
I think it's kind of pointless, but if I were, this would be a 10 out of 10, obviously. Um, but yeah, just for the meme of it, it's a 10 out of 10. Amazing chapter. Wasn't really anything I didn't like. Um, a lot to speculate about. Man, I am just so hype for what is going to happen next. Um, no break next week. But yeah, let me know what you guys thought of the chapter. This amazing chapter of One Piece. So much to come um, from from Garp's history, Big Mom and Kaido's history, Shanks's history, the history between Don Quixote, uh, Mo- Mo-Gar- Mosgard, whatever his name is. That J messes me up, dude. Um, what his history is with um, with uh, Odahime. It's just greatness, dude. Like, this chapter is amazing. Uh, I love One Piece. One Piece is great. If you're not reading One Piece, you're not living, you know? Um, so, yeah. Let me know what you guys think in the in the comments down below. Like this video if you like the video. Dislike the video if you dislike the video. Um, but if you dislike the video, then you dislike One Piece. So, there's that. Um, yeah, One Piece is greatness. Rambling on. See you guys in the next one.